What's up guys? Just want to talk to you about 35mm film cameras today. Uh, it's a great item to pick up whether you're uh, going to estate sales, thrifting, or uh, garage selling. Um, this is a consistent item you can find that people try to get rid of and usually people get rid of it fairly cheap just because they assume uh, you know, digital cameras are so prevalent and easy to use and your phone has a better camera than you know, you know any of these resolutions could ever pick up. Um, they think they're not worth a lot, so you can pick them up cheap and you can sell them for a good amount of money. Um, if you don't know anything about the cameras, you can just say, uh, you know, you, you say the name of the camera and you just say untested. And you say, you know, good overall condition and you try to take pictures of whatever you can. Um, I always try to take pictures of, you know, the front, back, the lens, just to, so people can see what the lens is. Um, and I try to open the camera to show both the battery compartment and the film compartment if I can open them. Sometimes I can't, sometimes I can't even figure out how to open them. So uh, I'm gonna get right into it. This is 10 35 millimeter film cameras that you should keep your eyes out for. It, you may not find the exact ones, but if you see something similar or see one of these name brands, you should try to pick it up. And it's not only these old looking ones that sell well. Um, some of the more modern 35 millimeter cameras sell really well. And just look at this one. This one's really cool. One sec. Let's see if I can focus on here. Just looks like a little baby camera, right? Let me turn the sucker on. Just looks like a little normal camera, and then you start zooming, ready? Thing goes out for days. Anyway, let's get into this, and uh, I want you to keep in mind what you think each camera's worth, and I'm gonna show you what they are worth at the end. I'm just gonna go through them real quick, and then we'll go through prices, so. Um, or I'll do it at the same time, we'll see. This is a Yashica GT35, 30, uh, 35mm film camera. Um, I picked this up for, I think, about $10, and it is worth approximately $140. So that's a great find, 10 into 140, pretty good. Um, next up, we have an Asahi Pentax K1000 35mm film camera. Um, this one's going for about $100. Uh, give or take 10 depending on you know what lens you have and the condition of the camera and who's buying next up we have a konica auto reflex tc um, this one's kind of cool it had a vintage epcot center strap on it but uh this one's going for try to guess it compared to these two it's going for only forty dollars I might be able to squeeze out an extra 20 because that camera strap's really cool. But uh, it, it's kind of crazy, the variation in the prices, you know. If you don't know anything about cameras, why is this one only $40? Why are these, you know, 100 over that? Who knows? Um, the amount of production, the rarity, the year made, the quality of the camera, the brand, all of that takes into account. I'm not sure exactly what, but uh, I kind of just know what to look for because I've been selling these for a while. Um, next up, we have a Canon FTB QL 35mm film camera with uh, the Canon lens. This one goes for about $150, give or take $10, $20. Uh, that was a good find. I think I got that one in a lot that I paid $15 or $20 for. So I got other things and the camera with that. Uh, next up, I have a Pentax, Asahi Pentax MV 35mm film camera. This one, get this, only goes for $30. So that's uh, one of the cheaper ones of the lot. I thought that one was gonna do really well because it was a really small SLR camera as opposed to some of the bigger ones which are much more bulky, but I was completely wrong. My gut was way off on that. I paid $5 for that one, so. Um, sometimes I look them up, sometimes I, I don't even bother. I just say, hey, can I, can I give you 10 bucks, five bucks for this? And a lot of the times I'll say yeah, or I'll lot it up with stuff and kinda hide it in the lot. Not not that I'm hiding it, but there's so many other things that they're considering that they think it's junk in comparison. Um, next up, I have this Honeywell Pentax 35mm uh, film camera. Um, this one, again, I thought would go for a lot. Pentax is a great brand, but the prices range a lot. This one's going for $35. So, um, I don't think you would have guessed that because you see, you know, this Pentax is 100 this Pentax is 35, why? You know, just like I said before, 
um, has to do with production, rarity, year made, all that. Um, next up is a Minolta 7000 Maxim 35 millimeter film camera. And to try to guess the price on this, you'll see if you can get it. Um, all right, and this one's going for about a hundred plus. The reason I say a hundred plus on this is because I didn't look up the Sigma lens yet, but I think it's a good lens. So, um, the camera itself with another lens is going for about 80. I think that lens is a valuable lens. I'm not sure. So we'll say a hundred plus. Um, try to guess this one. Sears just went out of business and declared bankruptcy. So this is a vintage Sears SL11 35 millimeter film camera in, in good working condition. Um, let's see if we can get the lens on it. It also has the original Sears lens. Not that it's super valuable, but this one is going for $40. And I don't know whether it's going to go up in value because Sears declared bankruptcy, but uh, I would imagine so. But I thought this one is really cool. You know, this one's heavy. This one has some weight to it, some heft. Back when they made stuff, you know, out of quality, out of metal. Um, you can just tell the quality of it. Unfortunately, it's not worth a ton. Uh, I think I paid $15 for that. And I was just assuming it was going to go for a lot more. But it didn't. So, uh, that's part of it. Part of the game is you're going to make, you know, bets you're going to lose on. I don't really lose, but I'm, I'm going to make $10 net after the sale. $15. Okay, next up we have a Minolta X700 MPS 35mm film camera. And this one is going for, try to guess the price based on the other ones. Try to guess it. Are you ready? This one is going for, the Minolta X700 is going for... $80 so um, you know not a bad buy I bought that one with a bunch of other lenses for I think 20 bucks um, I paid up a little on it but because of all the other lenses it'll make the listing a lot more attractive you know when you can include a camera bag a strap maybe a blank 35 millimeter film and another lens or something and other accessories it kind of ups the value and makes your listing more attractive so um, and here we go on this last one. This is the cool Pentax. I actually might keep this one just because I want to. I want to have a 35 millimeter just so I don't want to mess around. And I might get keep one uh, mechanical 35 millimeter. But uh, this one's cool. Um, I have a lot of other 35 millimeter um, like this style. Um, you know, pick these up too. There's there's they range in value a ton, but. Um, most people think these are very cheap. And this one's just a blast because that lens, is, it zooms out so much. It looks like a little baby dinky camera, but it's high quality. Look at that lens, jeez. Long as heck. Let's see, let's take a picture of us. Boom. It actually has film in it still, so... Not that I'm going to get that developed, but... Yeah. So that one, this Pentax, this Pentax IQ Zoom 120SW goes for about $65. Um, I think the, that's the average on eBay. They're actually selling for about $55, but it would sell for $65 in, in good working condition. So um, that's it. That's 10 35mm SLR cameras you should be looking for while thrifting, estating, and garage sailing. Um, I'm going to give you guys another little tip. I don't do it that much, but if you go into 35 millimeter cameras on eBay and you go to bids and ending soonest, um, you can snipe some of these at really, really low prices. I don't do this. I'm considering doing it, but uh, hopefully I didn't ruin anyone's business by saying that. But yeah, um, 35 millimeter cameras are really, really great because people undervalue them. They don't think they're worth a lot, which means you can increase your net. If you buy low and sell high, you know, there's two ways you make money. You make money by selling very high and buying very low. And the bigger you make that spread, the greater your net is. So um, you want to look for this kind of stuff. Uh, just, you know, feel the camera bodies. If they're kind of heavy, that's kind of a good telltale sign that they might have value to them, but not always. And, you know, if they're the old, older metal bodies, that's a good sign. 
if you feel uh, if you find autofocus um, autofocus 35 millimeter cameras that's a thing to look for when you see things like let me see if I can zoom in on that might not zoom but when you see things like AF or autofocus or multi autofocus that typically means you can at least sell the camera for 15 20 bucks and sometimes a lot more so um, thanks for watching let me know if you do well with cameras or what you look for and uh yeah, good luck flipping, good luck hunting. Please like and subscribe. I want to post a lot more reselling videos and try to get uh, the knowledge out there. You know, I'll keep some of it to myself, but, you know, share the wealth. And, uh, yeah, thanks again for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Later.